Is it working? God is good, amen. And just tell your neighbor everything's going to be all right. We're just in the last days, that's all. Go to Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Matthew 6, starting with verse 9. I want you to just tell yourself tonight, change is coming. And when I heard that word today, uh, I, I, I reverted back to several years ago where we had the change in service. And God done great and mighty things through that. But we can't go and dwell what happened years ago. We've got to deal with the present and our future. Amen. Just tell yourself, i got to deal with my present today and my future. Amen. Because what happened years ago, that's unpass. It's over. It could happen again, but I'm looking forward to God doing something new. That has nothing to do with Matthew 6, what I'm telling you. But there was a prophet named Elisha that lived and God used him mightily. And there was a famine in Jerusalem because they had been besieged by the Assyrians and they just didn't come in and attack and take over all at once. They surrounded the city and they cut off everything around them. And sometimes the devil don't come and just attack all at once and take everything. He wants to cut off everything around you spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, family, can I get a witness? But the king got upset at Elisha and said, I'm going to cut his head off by this time tomorrow. But then the man of God said, and here, here's how bad it had gotten in Jerusalem. They were eating donkey's heads. 
and they were selling dove droppings, and they were eating that. But the prophet said there's going to be flour and there's going to be bread and there's going to, and it's going to sell for this tomorrow at the gate of Jerusalem. The king said, I'm going to have his head cut off. Want to know why people want to cut the heads of, of the prophets off? It's because he wants to silence them. Want to know why the enemy tries to cut your head off? He wants to silence you. Want to know why he comes and he circles and he cuts off every avenue of your livelihood. He don't tack just come and take everything all at once. He comes around and he circles and he starts cutting the nucleus. And let me tell you, that's what happens to churches. But God is God. The man of God spoke and said, there's going to be a change in Jerusalem by this time tomorrow. I don't know what the enemy has cut off from you. I don't know what he's taken from you. I don't know what he's shut you up about. But if I was you, if I could preach like some of them old Saints of years ago, I would preach like that this night. If I was you, I would stand up and tell the devil he's a bald-faced liar. I would stand up and say, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to get a change. A change in my life, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, and I'm never going to shut up. I'm never going to shut up. Why? Because I know that God is bringing a change inside of me. Somebody shout amen. When one person changes, if it's infectious, it'll start, it'll start just growing and multiplying. That's how they did in, in the book of Acts. They began to multiply. Why? Because 120 people got a change, church. You can't come in here and sit and say, where is everybody? Open your mouth. Begin to pray and say, God, turn people loose. Amen. If these people don't want to come to church and want to sit home, let them sit home. Pray that God will send somebody new. Amen. 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 And they even got to the into cannibalism. One woman said, you boil your child and we'll eat it today and tomorrow we'll eat yours. Guess what? The one that didn't boil her child, she said, no, you ain't going to. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. The devil will take whatever we allow him to. Well, he's got me circled and I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Start using the name of Jesus. 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 How many can speak tonight? No, I ain't heard, I heard some of you, but some of you. How many just shout, Jesus, Jesus. By, this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, I decree, I, decree, I, declare, I declare, there's going to be a change be a in change. my life. In my it's going to be infectious. Be it's going to get on everybody that I come in contact with because I'm changed. I'm changed. And sometimes, sometimes the devil doesn't have to cut her head off to shut us up. He uses other tactics. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's just running through my spirit so much. By this time tomorrow. And see, you already started doubting. Because you're done being besieged. You're, you're done. It's, 
It's done circled you. Well, he said that before. He said this. Come on, church. Amen. Let me tell you, words of prophecy does not work for people that don't believe it's going to happen. And if you can't receive it, there's nothing going to change. But I believe it. I receive it. I'm believing for a change. I'm believing for a change in this church by Sunday. I'm believing that God can touch the hearts and the lives of people that are not going to church. I don't want people from other churches. I want new people that, not had, that has not been churched. New people. Somebody shout new people. I dare somebody to get up and run and just touch every pew in here and say, God, I decree and I declare that there's going to be new people Sunday morning. Why? Because there's going to be a change. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a change. How many pennies come in a row? 50 or 100? Lisa, can you? I, I don't want the change that we've had. I want to, I don't know where it's at. I need to find it and let you put it in the bank. I want some new change. Give me about $100 worth of pennies. Tell them you want new. And we're going to sell them Sunday for $5 a row. You want to change? Well, I'm not paying $5 for 50 cents. Go ahead and stay the way you are. And some of you watching, send your $5. We'll get you 50 pennies. Do you really want to change, church? God, help us. He, uh, let me, uh, it's hard to, you study for something and then all of a sudden you get blindsided by the Holy Ghost. But he, he's, he knows, Holy Ghost knows, amen. Yes. Oh, don't you be hot. Mm -hmm. Every art right, kind of, just kind of. Squinchy. If you mean you want me to say that, Holy Ghost? You ever done that? I said they were they were selling the doves droppings. Churches have gotten to the place that the dove came by. But he didn't stay. And we're satisfied with just an occasional drop in by the Holy Ghost, the dove. Remember when Jesus come up out of the water, there was a dove set up on his head. I can't hear nobody. I don't know about you, but I need the dove 24-7. 365 days a year. I don't need him just to drop by and do a dropping. Come on, follow me now. But I need the Holy Ghost to come by and to stay. Can I get an amen? And we used to have people that was full of the Holy Ghost that they would pray until the Holy Ghost took over. <laughs> Hallelujah. I sense some of y'all just want to stay where you're at. So I'm just going to leave you where you're at. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Glory, I, I, I can't imagine eating dove droppings or a donkey head. 
Now, Jews, they had to eat the right thing. They had to eat things that were clean, but they began to compromise. They began to compromise, and that's what happens with us. We begin to compromise, and we get used to just by a drop-in of the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness? But there's a change coming. Slap yourself silly and say, there's a change coming. Maybe I should ask for $50 for them 50 pence. Disciples asked him, Jesus, how to pray. And he tells them, don't make a long ado about this. They love to stand and for people to hear them because of the big words and the stuff that they use. God wasn't hearing them. Because they had made everything about them, and it's not about them, it was about him. When we go to prayer, it's got to be him and not us. So then Jesus says to them, after this manner or after this way, therefore, Pray ye. Pray. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face, pray. Remember when you could call a prayer meeting and people would come from far and near to come because they we're making it all about him and not about us. And if you record your prayers, sometimes we'll find out, Brother Benny, it's all about us. It's gimme, gimme, gimme. Thank you, Lord. And you are gone. Hello. So I've titled this. Yahweh, Lord, Jehovah. I like that. Jehovah. Everybody just say, Jehovah. In other words, our Father. In other words, who is God to you tonight? Question. Is he God Almighty? Is he the most high? Is he Lord? Is he master? Is he Jehovah, your righteousness? The everlasting God, your provider, the all-sufficient one, your source of peace, your father, your shepherd. I say he's all that and much, much more. He is God Almighty. In other words, he said, after this manner or after this way, pray our, in other words, you've got to recognize and you've got to make sure that you associate it with and you know who God the Father is. Can I get a witness? I mean that you've got a intimate relationship with him. Somebody say amen. An intimate relationship that you know him one-on-one -on -one and he knows you. It's a fact that he knows us, but do we know him and his power? Do we know him and what he can do for us if we'll do what he says for us to do? So he said, pray, our Father which art in heaven. It just kind of blows my mind. 
And then he says, Hallowed or holy be thy name. In other words, God is set apart from everything. God is to be reverend. Amen. God is to be reverend. Somebody gave me a thing that said Reverend Mike Beavis. I said, don't call me Reverend because you don't worship me. Not, not trying to be rude or to scold, but there's only one to be Reverend tonight, church, and that's Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah God. Jehovah. Somewhere along the pathway, churches, including us, have lost that fear of God. And in a way we make it, Sister Gloria, like he's not holy, he's not set apart. That God, holiness, is set apart from us. Then he says, the only way we can come to come boldly before the throne of grace, but the only way to come before the throne of grace boldly is that we're washed in the blood and we're covered in his son's righteousness. Remember Paul said, not having mine own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of God through Christ Jesus can I get an amen? And remember what Paul said in Philippians. He said that I may know him. And you can study that. And he's been 38 years. He's been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. He's written most of the New Testament. He'd been in prison all that time. And he's still writing to the Philippian church. Church, And he says that I may know him, that I may know him. I count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of God. And we used to do that. We used to reference the house. Well, this, we just got drywall, we got wood, we got carpet, we got padded pews. I don't care if it was five gallon buckets and we're sitting on them and we made this a place that we have come to worship the Lord God, Jehovah. And we come in and we reference him in this house and we reference him with ourselves. Can I get an amen? Because we're the temple of God and wherever we're at, we, we must be set apart just like him. Holy, can I get an amen? And just get into that holiness. And let me tell you, when you walk into his holiness, you better be right. He's set apart. He's other than. And I could ask some of you questions about yesteryear, but I don't want to stay in yesteryear. I want to deal with today and our future. Amen. In other words, he says, hallowed, holy. And I believe that once you really know who he is, you know who Jehovah is, and you reference that name, and you give him the respect. There's another thing that we're missing. The respect. The respect. That God deserves. Can I get an amen? 
So he said, hallowed be thy name. God already knows, church, what we need and what things we have need of. And all he's, Jesus is portraying here that in this way or in this fashion, therefore pray our Father, in other words, recognizing you know who he is beyond a shadow of a doubt. Paul was still digging deep and saying that I may know him. I've known him in shipwreck three times. I've known him when a venomous viper bit me. I've known him when I was beaten and left outside of the city for dead. I've known him in all of these things. Come on, somebody. But I still want to know him. He knew him when he asked God three times, and God says, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Somebody shout amen. Are we at that place in our spiritual life that we can say, Lord, no matter how many times I've prayed, we've heard your word, your grace is sufficient for me. So I'm just going to praise you because your name deserves praise. Your name deserves deserves to be set apart. Can I get an amen? Your name, your presence deserves my reference. Hallelujah. I'm afraid we've made it that we come and we do our ritual. But he says, if you do this, and I believe Church, that if we fall into this category and we pray, if we want to see the will of God done, we begin to reference the names of God. And here, I'm just going to give you seven or eight. But you'll never get to the place to ask God for things because he already knows but we just begin to reference the God Jehovah Jireh. Remember Abraham told Isaac, God will provide. And on that mountain in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 14, God provided. So there he's called Jehovah Jireh. Don't that just sink something down into your spirit that there he is about to sacrifice his own son, carrying out, carrying out the will of God. Come on, somebody. If you want to know the will of God, you've got to know God. If you want to know the will of God for your life, you've got to know him. Can I get an amen? So in the Bible, he's called... Here's what it says, 22, 21. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of, out of heaven. What was the prayer? Our Father, which art in, which art in heaven. And he called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham. He just didn't stop Brother Benny calling him once. He called him twice. Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know God. I know that thou what? Fearest. God. What's that word in, in Proverbs? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Is that what it says? The fear? The fear of God is the beginning, Brother Benny, of wisdom. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And 
And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. So on that mountain, Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. You could stay just in that mode of worship. Lord, I worship you, Jehovah Jireh, because you will provide. You've always provided. Come on, church. And somebody, I think, mentioned this Sunday morning or Sunday night that sometimes we're like that song, and like Mary and Martha. Lord, if you'd have been here, you're four days late. No, I'm just on time because with God, God is the creator. Jehovah Jireh will provide. He, remember what Jesus told him? This sickness is not unto death. And the disciples catch, kept watching. When is he going? By the time he gets the message, he, Lazarus is already dead. Hello? But Jesus said, this sickness, in other words, the Lord will provide. Somebody tell yourself tonight, don't care what you're going through, what kind of financial difficulty or whatever you may be going through. Just begin to say, Lord God, Jehovah Jireh, I worship you. I praise you because you are my provider. Nobody else. The government is not my provider. My job is not my provider. Lord God, you are my provider. You see, we begin to lean on other things and other ways that is our provision, but that's not our provision. God can give you an excellent job. He can give you a job making a lot of money, but that job is not your provider. It's God because he can cut it dry any given moment. When we stop fearing God, when we stop Worshiping Jehovah Jireh because he is my provider. I know him. He knows me. So I call him Jehovah Jireh. The Lord my provider. Then you could get caught up in the name Jehovah Rapha. Exodus 15 and 26. Well, what does Jehovah Rapha mean? The Lord who heals. Have we forgot him? The Lord, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And I would not be afraid to say that every one of us in here needs some kind of healing or we got some family member or a loved one or a friend that we know that needs an Exodus 15 and 26. That they need the Lord God Jehovah Rapha. And said if thou, if thou wilt Diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none. I, oh, Lord Jesus. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am... The Lord that what? So he's Jehovah Rapha. And Brother Benny, when we get in our prayer time, when we get to the place, hallowed be thy name. How many needs healing tonight? No, how many really needs healing tonight? No, I'm not looking for a nonchalantly person. I'm looking for somebody that knows he's Jehovah Rapha. 
I know that my God can heal, whether it's today or tomorrow or next week or the week after that, because I know what his word says, that he is the Lord God Jehovah that healeth us. By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. It's a promise. It's a gift of God, church. So Jehovah Rapha, I praise you because I'm already healed. I've just got to bring my spirit, my spiritual man in line with what God says. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Well, how do you get all that out of a prayer to God? Because God knows what we need. His name, hallowed be his name, is set apart. And his name is above every name. And the Bible says that Jesus has been given a name. He's been highly exalted, highly exalted above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he, Jesus, is Lord. Hallelujah. You believe he's Lord tonight? Is he Lord of your life? Is he the Lord of your life? So he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Nisi. The Lord, our banner. Exodus 17 and 15. Brother Moses. He's my banner. He's my shield. He's my buckler. He's the horn of my salvation. And Moses built an altar and call the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Why? Because he's my banner. What's that scripture? He's given us a banner that display the truth that Jehovah. He's my banner. So I'm going to wave my banner to the God Jehovah Nisi, who is separated, he's set apart, he's almighty God, he's the creator, he's El Elyon, he is almighty God, he is Jehovah. And the Jews had gotten to the place that they were afraid to even call out the name. So they called him Jehovah And here Moses, he builds an altar. Oh, God, wouldn't it be great that we would all build an altar in our hearts, in our spirits, and seek the Lord God, Jehovah Nisi, who is our banner, and that we would wave that banner high? Somebody shout amen. amen. Another name for God is Jehovah Shalom. Found in Judges 6 and 24 means the Lord our peace. But in the New Testament, Paul writes that there's a peace. that's above our understanding, beyond our understanding, beyond our comp comprehension. He's Jehovah Shalom. Can I get an amen? amen? Peace. Somebody say peace. peace. That he brings that peace. And isn't that what every one of us here tonight, we need the peace of Jehovah. The peace that only Christ can bring in our life. Beyond our understanding. 
There's times, church, that we are facing crisis, going through difficulties and times that we get flooded with the peace of God. Everybody say that get, we get flooded by the peace of God. You ever had that peace just flood your soul? I have countless number of times, and it's because of Jehovah Shalom. My peace. My peace. Let's go to Psalms 23. Start with verse 1. He's Jehovah Rohi, the Lord, our Shepherd. Remember what David wrote? Somebody read it. I, I know what it says, but I want somebody else to read it. Anybody? Go and make it go go all the way to verse six. Isn't that like a shepherd? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. And then that last verse, he says, David says, surely. I can just hear the Holy Ghost telling David, surely. And David's pinning that because he's been in that valley of the shadow of death. He's been by that still waters. But then God, the Holy Ghost just says, surely. Goodness. The shepherd will bring goodness and mercy. What, what is it going to do for me? It's going to follow me all the days of my life. I will, I will. Somebody just say, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, if you're making these declarations when you're praying this prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You get caught up in all of these names of God, and there's, there's many of them in the Bible, and I'm only using a few, but then you take this and go back to verse 1, and David just says, the Lord is my shepherd. David knew what it was to be a shepherd because he was placed on the backside of the mountain and he's herding his father's sheep. He's the smallest of all his brothers. He's ruddy, not much to look at compared to his big, strapling, handsome brothers. But David knew what it was that God was his shepherd. Why? Because when the enemy come to take David's sheep, David said, the Lord provided. When the lion came, it was God. When the bear came, it was 
God. When you've been through tragedy, when you've been through difficulties, when you've been, it's the shepherd that has been there all along. The Lord is my shepherd. And the only way that we can comfortably say that is that we know him as God Almighty and know him as the Lord is my shepherd. So I worship him, I praise him, and I glorify him. And just look tonight, church, at what God has done already in your life. No doubt that none of us would be here if he was not our shepherd. And David said, because of that, I shall not want. There's not anything in me that I need because the Lord is my shepherd. Why? Because David knew to carry the sheep. On this side of the mountain because the grass is greener. And the Lord provided, the Lord protected him. And the sheep had no want because they knew David as their shepherd. Come on church. Do you know God tonight as your shepherd? There's times that he tries to lead us. He tries to guide us to the place of comfort to where we will not want for anything and that we'll understand that he is God Almighty. He's El Elyon. He is El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Now, I believe if we get caught up in these names of God alone, hallowed be thy name, and we fear him, and we reference that name because it's, a holy, holy, holy name. What's that chorus sometimes we sing? Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Somebody just say it. Holy. Holy. Then we come to Jeremiah 23 and 6. Jehovah said to me, the Lord, our righteousness. Remember what Isaiah said? Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But God is our righteousness. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is in this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. No matter how much works we try to do, no matter how good many good deeds we try to make, we cannot make ourselves righteous. It has to come through the bloodshed blood of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Righteousness. Everybody just say righteousness. You believe God expects us to live holy? His word says, be ye holy, for I'm holy also. In other words, when we come before him, we reference him not as just, and I hate to say it this way, but I believe it's true. He's not just a sugar daddy. He's God. He's God. And when we come before him in prayer, whether it's kneeling, whether it's standing, whether it's sitting, whether it's laying prostrate out on the floor, regardless of how we we come before him, but we must understand 
that he's our heavenly father and he's to be referenced and we come before him and we give him the praise, the glory and all of the honor because it's not about us. He already knows our needs and what is going on in our life. And I believe when we begin to decree and declare these names that God will just take over and all of these things will come to pass. He'll provide. He'll be our healer. He'll be our healer, church. And not only physically, but spiritual healing. A lot of people need in the church today a spiritual healing. We need to get over the hump. We need to get over things of yesteryear. We need to get over the things of what happened back then. If you want to stay there, that's where you'll stay. But if you want the Lord to be your shepherd, you want heaven to come down on earth, then you'll make him your everyday present God. He's Jehovah. He's Jehovah. He's Jehovah. He's our righteousness. And then we could go to Ezekiel 48 and 35. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is present. The Lord is here. How often do we come to this place and say, well, I didn't feel a thing. Well, he was here. It's just, did we recognize his presence? Did we discern his presence? We come and say, well, God, what's wrong? What's going on? Where's everybody at? It's not about where's everybody at. You're here. So make the best of what you're here for. That's to worship the Lord God Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, come on, Rapha, my healer. He's my provider. That's enough, Brother Benny, to keep us going for a lifetime. Why? Because he can provide at any given moment. And I can testify to that. I've seen him move. I've seen him provide, Sister Gloria. I've seen him use people that are not even saved to provide for you. And every one of us have been healed by people praying for us or maybe you prayed for yourself. I can remember one time I was having, I always had problems. I don't know what I'd done to my neck, but it gave me a lot of problems and it was hurting. And I was sitting at the eating table, nobody there. I was just sitting there reading God's word and that pain just kept gnawing at me and hit me. And all of a sudden, I just felt the presence of God and I just slapped my hand back there and I said, in the name of Jesus. Want to know what happened, sister? Jesus showed up. Jehovah Jireh showed up. Jehovah Rapha showed up. And he healed me. And I have not been plagued with that again. And that's been over 42 years. And you, sitting here tonight, could testify of ways God has provided for you. Spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally. How God has protected you. Your family kept your, his hand upon them. Can I get an amen? Some of them should have been dead by now. But because of the grace and the mercy of God, Jehovah Jireh, can I get an amen? My provider, he's provided a way for my children. Can I get an amen? My grandchildren and great-grandchildren. One doctor told DJ, our grandson, said, that we'll have to take your eye out and get a transplant. But another doctor here in Tampa says, we don't have to do that. I can fix it. Guess what happened? Monday, God fixed it. Hallelujah. 
No, hallelujah. And just recently the doctor told Sister Deborah set him back there. But what did God do? He showed up. Might have had to take some tests. Might have had to go through some things. But Brother Benny, he showed up. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Rapha. You're here tonight. So praise Jehovah Rapha. He's the Lord who heals. He's my healer. It's easy, church. It's easy to get down and out and in the mully grubs. But it doesn't make you any better. It makes you worse. I'd rather go before him and say, he's my Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you're my Jehovah Rapha. You're all of these names, Lord, and I just praise you. I reference you. Can I just insert this? We used to stand in awe of the presence of God. Especially when the Holy Ghost would speak. People, you could hear a pin fall on the carpet. Babies would hush. But it ain't the babies we're dealing with now. It's the adults. They keep on yapping. They're on their phone. But I want to call that Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. I want to call him from heaven here on earth. His kingdom come. His kingdom come. Somebody shout amen. The Lord is present. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be called the Lord is here. Instead of walking out of this building and saying, I just didn't feel God. Well, Deborah, he's here. Well, how do you know, Pastor? I brought him with me. You want to know how to activate that excitement, that joy, that peace inside of your, your spiritual man is begin to say, he's my Jehovah Jireh. He's my Jehovah Rapha because he's healed me can many, many times. You may be going through a besiegement of the enemy, but let me tell you, he may have everything surrounded around you, and he's attacking over here, and he'll go over here, and he'll go over there, and he'll go over there, but he, God is still God, and God is present. And God will only allow, listen to this church, God will only allow the enemy to go so far. There's not a trial, not a temptation that God does not know we are going through, but the Bible says that he will make a way of escape. That doesn't mean we're going to turn, tail, and run. It means we're going straight forward, and we're going right now in the present. Why? Because God is here. No, y'all didn't understand what I said. We're going to move. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, change is coming. Tell yourself, no, change is coming. Your worst enemy is yourself. It's the flesh that wants to flare up. Well, I ain't seen God move. What did it tell the prophet? I wasn't in the whirlwind. I wasn't in the lightning and the thunder. You know, by the way, where were you at when I said, let there be light? Do you know where God was? But we're too busy, caught up in ourselves. He was in that small, still voice. God is speaking, but are we listening? 
the Lord is close. Closer than a brother. Closer than a friend. I remember years ago, I'd be driving, going to work. A lot of times I had to leave 2 o'clock in the morning to drive 100 miles to the job. And I say, God, I don't know if you're with me or not. I find me a place to turn off, pull over to the side of the road. I said, I ain't going another step. I ain't going another step unless I know that you're here. I start praying. I start hollering, start shouting. People going by, whizzing by. Well, what this crazy man, what is he doing out there? But time after time, Benny, all of a sudden, there'd be that rushing wind just come breezing by, and you knew, sister, that God, he was there all the time. Sometimes he's just waiting on us to summons him and to call upon him so he can let us know the Lord is present. Church, we need him present in our lives. We need him present in this local church. Want to know what's going to make a difference with people in here? When we begin to fear God. When we begin to come back to our grassroots. To we come back to where we know that we've been with God. And there's a deeper walk with him. He's Jehovah. He's Jehovah. I'm talking about Jehovah. That you don't have to get primed up with a song. That you get excited because he's Jehovah. We got light shows. We I, 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 I can't understand why they want to turn off all the light. What are you trying to hide? I don't need smoke. I need the real Shekinah glory. Can't hear nobody. And we used to have that presence, church, that the Shekinah glory would come in. And everybody knew it. Sinner, backslider, saint of God, everybody knew when that Shekinah glory would come in. A lot of people would go out when it come in because they couldn't stand it. Can I get an amen? When you turn a light on, when you take a piece of wood or a rock that's been sitting for a long time and you turn it upside down and move it, you see all kind of little critters just running. Want we'll to know what they're running from? Is because they've been exposed to the light. And when we get to the place that we fear God like we used to, and when we're turned over, when we're turned on by the power of God and not by anything else, can I get an amen? But because he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Rapha. Let me tell you what he's done for me. He's healed me. He's provided. He's taken care of. He's been my shepherd. I can't hear nobody. He's been my very present help in the time of trouble. You begin to announce that. You begin to proclaim that. This place will fill up with the Shekinah glory. And what Shekinah glory does, it draws and woos people. People are not going to come because of who you are or who I am. They're going to come because of who he is. They're going to come because, let's go over there and let's check this crowd out. And let's see what, what, what they got. Let's see what, what they're doing to me. Hello? That's what they're saying about Ashbury University. A lot of them is saying, well, it's not real revival. It's this and it's this and it's that and it's this. I'd be afraid to speak against something. 
I'd be like that man in the Bible. You can't fight against God. If it's God, ain't nobody going to stop it. But if it ain't God, it'll be stopped. And guess what? It's still going on. I don't care if it's just young people. Can I get an amen? We need that generation on fire for God. And it might spark a spark of light of fire inside of us. Can I get an amen? Look at yourself and say, one match. One match can burn a $30,000 or 30,000 square foot building. One match. One match in here that struck to bring a fire-burning revival. You can tell people about church, but if you're not excited about the church that you go to, if you're not excited about, about praying to God, if you're not excited about, he's Jehovah Rapha, he's healed me, let me tell you what God has done for me. I got a friend over in Lake Placid. I got a, uh, we seen him somewhere at a restaurant. He just walked over and he leaned over and he said, I'm in trouble. His name is Bill. Y'all pray for him. His hair is whiter than yours, but y'all would pass for twins, wouldn't they? They would, Brother Benny. Every time I see him, I said, there's Brother Benny. His hair is just whiter. He's as white as snow. And he's got as much hair as you've got. But he said, I'm in trouble. And there's been times that I've been with him, and I was putting rocks out, and he'd come and help me, and, and he'd say some cuss words, and he says, oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to say that. So you don't have to harp on people and say, you're going to hell. You know what you have to be? Light and salt. Light and salt. Light and salt. And be excited about the God that you serve. And let them know that you reference him and that you fear him and him alone. I don't fear what people can do because they can't take my life. They can't take what's inside of me. And the devil but he wants to surround us amen then he's Jehovah Kaddish the Lord who sanctifies God if we don't need the preaching of sanctification I don't know what we need old time sanctification Remember, they used to call them churches, us and all Pentecostal. Oh, that's that sanctified bunch. They don't even call us that. They don't even call us holy rollers no more. He's the God that sanctifies. He's Elohim, God. He's El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. Go back to Matthew 6 and let me finish verse 10. And I want to say this. I rebuke these gnats in the name of Jesus. Where are they coming from? Is there something in the garbage can somewhere? I know they did. They went up my nose sitting right here. They in my office. They're everywhere. You go back that away. They're in here. Somebody find out the how they are getting what. You got to have something in here. Well, or right, do they bother y'all? Is it just me? I mean, there was a big one. It went up my nose, and I wanted to. Blow it out Sunday night. So I just went like this so I could just smash him inside there. We
We've been, ba- been invaded by the gnats. Amen. Before I read verse 10, I want to tell you this. Perfect faith cannot exist where the will of God is not known for your life. I am not moved by what I see, but I am moved by what I believe. And I believe the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Verse 10, he says, Thy kingdom come. This is after maybe you spent 30 minutes in just praising and fearing the Lord and in his presence, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah said to me, the Lord is my shepherd. Then you may get to this verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. In other words, you agree to God's ways. Thy will, not my will, but his will. And what is God's will for your life? All 66 books of the Bible. Can you comprehend that? Can you grasp that in your spirit, man? There's times that we read the word of God and it like it jumps off of the pages and right into your spirit. Well, his word is spirit. It's alive. It's active. Have you ever had the active word of God? Lord, I've been praying. There, that nasty nap. It's what? Well, surely not inside here. Something's got to be causing them to act and breathe. And well, turn that AC down to 60 degrees. So y'all come Sunday, we're going to have a gnat killing Sunday. (laughs) Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, Sister Robin, the will of God is already proclaimed, decreed, and declared, and set as a foundation. And God is telling us tonight, Benny, that if we will decree and declare thy will, Lord, not my will, not my way, and you've been like me, I've prayed prayers, Lord, if you just do this, or you'd let me find it on the side of the road. God ain't looking. Lord, you can cause people to bring me diamonds, rubies, cash, silver, gold. I've even said, God, you can bring that Chinaman all the way over here from China and bring it. But then you have to get to the place, Lord, ever how you want it, thy will be done on earth. As it is already in heaven, I'm already healed in heaven. Oh, y'all need to get that. He's my provider already in heaven. He's done provided. He's already provided everything that we will ever need. Because he's El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. So the next time you go to prayer, start with the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father, my Savior, my God, my Christ, my Jesus. He said, if I asked anything in the name of Jesus, that he'd do it. In other words, that's already done in heaven. I've just got to get myself to the place that I can get it here on earth. And how do I do that? By worship, by fearing God, by living righteous and holy and keeping his statutes and his commandments and referencing his holy, holy name. Holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. Reckon how, reckon how, reckon how old Moses felt when he seen a burning bush. And he said, let me draw myself nigh to this. See what's going on. But before Moses could get close to the fire, God told him, Moses, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. And we used to reference God that way when we drove up to the parking lots at our church. We used to feel that and know that when we walked through that door. This is a holy place where a holy God dwells. And you know what happened? Because of his holiness, his Shekinah glory, because of his presence, he had pricked people, he had saved people. And I was one of those sitting right there 43 years ago. Right there on... I don't know how I got. How did I get to the third row? And I sat right there on one of them pinchum pews. And everybody was coming out of Sunday school, and people were just, you know. But then Rosanna Dana sitting over here on her piano, and she starts to play Amazing Grace. I heard that. In the Methodist church. I heard that from the Sunday school teacher there about the amazing grace. And I knew what that was. And they began to play it. Nobody sang it. And I knew I got to get out of here. I didn't make it out, did I? What was it? It was the holiness of people and the fear of God in their life. That's what changed the world. That's what we can do to change the world is we fear God. Did y'all get that? Want to know what's going to bring about a change? Is us fearing God. If you have you don't know what the will of God is for your life. Doubt and unbelief will surround you and withhold things from you. But when you get to the place in your spiritual life, church, that you know what the will of God is for your life. You ain't got to go out and buy some man's book that he's made the bestseller. You can read that word right there, pray to the Heavenly Father. And call upon his name and he'll show you what the will of God is for your life. And then there'll be no more of this. Well, should I go to church? Should I not? Well, I know what they're going to do. You know, that's the reason a lot of people, and I, I, I've thought about just cut the streaming off. But then there's people out of state that watch it constantly. But people are going to do what they do. But can I tell you, God is going to do what he can do. And what he's going to do, he's about to bring a change in how we go to church. He's about to bring a change in our life. There's about to be an excitement, a move of the Holy Ghost. The dove is coming by to stay. He's not coming by to just do drop in. But 
He's coming. He's coming. The will of God is that we remain in revival, in constant revival. How many would just say, Jehovah Jireh, I need you as my provider. Jehovah Rapha, I need you as my healer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, that's what we need. Lord, I decree it and declare it that by this time tomorrow there will be a change in the hearts and the lives of people. Right now, God, you're staring hearts, you're staring lives of people right now that's never heard of this church. But because of your spirit, because of your drawing spirit, Lord, they'll be here Sunday. And Sister Beavis met somebody the other night. The entire need of God intervening in their life. And I'm just, I'm not going to call no names. But devastation has hit. But God is the God of restoration. How many believe that? That he can restore things. Lord, I just feel that. Would you just lift your hand and say, Lord, touch all these people that need restoration in their life. Spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally. And Lord, tonight, Brother Sidney and Sister Diane need you to intervene you, for you to be Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And Brother Sidney and Sister Diane, right now, I rebuke this sickness in the name of Jesus. I command it to go in the name of Jesus and to release you. And Lord, those that are sitting home just because they wanted to sit home, Lord, I speak to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, that this would be released off of them. And Lord, the excitement, the fire of the Holy Ghost would ignite their lives right now. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody just said, amen and amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Benny, if you would come. Lord God, Jehovah. That's a lot of pennies, Sister Lisa, that I told you to get. But And when you come in Sunday, you should praise the Lord that you're here, thank God, and then go straight to Sister Lisa and say, I want my 50 pence. Amen. Husband and wife, you have to get your own 50 pence. I'm going to get mine. Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for mine right now. Just in case I don't have no change come Sunday. Well, you just do that. Here, Sister Lisa, I want my 50 pennies for 
well, I don't know if they'll give her all brand new or not, but it's going to be different than what we've had here. And it's going to, it, Sunday morning and Sunday night, we're believing for a change. And Lord, I'm believing your Jehovah Rapha and brother right now. Somebody shout right now. Father, right now, in Brother Robert's life, right now, you're Jehovah Rapha. Lord, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals. And I bind this sickness. Lord, your word says it. And by your stripes, he is healed. And I command him by this time tomorrow to rise up. Take up your bed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all got any honey at home? I want you to take just a spoonful of honey and a pinch of salt. I don't know why the Lord wants salty honey, but he does. Just give it to him tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And use that scripture, Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my healer. Somebody say, the Lord is my healer. The Lord is my healer. And it'll work for anybody else that wants to use that. If you got honey at home, just take, take a spoonful of honey and a pinch of salt. You say, well, what's a pinch? I don't know, just a pinch. Just a pinch. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Do you understand, saints? Y'all better stand because I may get a separate room here. Do you understand that all the saints that left here with some kind of ailment or sickness or disease, they're not in heaven walking on a cane. They're not bowed down. They're in heaven and having a hallelujah time. But we can have a hallelujah time right here, right now. Let it be done, Jesus. As we stand, yes. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21 says that your days may be multiplied, which it says in the verse before, he's talking about writing things on the, the doorpost of your house and your gates and all like this, which. Right, in, the, in, a, in our time, it would be on the tables of our hearts. But that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as days of heaven upon the earth. Praise God. As days of heaven. Heaven! heaven. Somebody show heaven. 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 Yeah. Wow. Just think about it. Just think about it. I want us to be together in heaven, run through the green clover, smell the flowers, hear them singing, see y'all Sunday morning come expecting a miracle. Don't forget, those that didn't hear about the 50 pennies cost you five bucks, but it's for a change, a change in your life. 